we got used to the dark we thought this is who we are and we figured that we were just too far gone but we were wrong cause love came running like a river and we got washed in the water then he said you forgiven and your sins are gone that was then this is now you bought by the blood saved by the sun the saints all sing about that was lost this is found and it's time to say goodbye to the old you now so go ahead put the past in the past
The things of earth are dearly In the light of your glory and grace I'll set the sights upon heaven I'm fixing my eyes on you Sometimes I think, what will people say of me when I'm only just a memory? When I'm home where my soul belongs? Was I loved when no one else would show up? Was I Jesus to the least of us? Was my worship more than just a song? Good morning. Am I the only one here in music? 
All right. It's there. All right. We'll get that figured out. But good morning. It's good to see you all here today. I'm glad you've chosen to come and worship with us or you're joining us here online. Uh, It's a good day to worship God, even if it's a little hot in the sanctuary. Apologies for that. Uh, Just to let you know, uh, a couple ways we're going to be dealing with that is... uh, beginning probably the first week of July when we move to our combined worship time at 10 a.m. We'll be moving worship from the sanctuary up to the great room because while the great room still doesn't have air conditioning, so we're not, you know, swapping no air conditioning for air conditioning, at least we can open the windows. So we'll be doing that. We're ordering some little hand fans so you can not use your bulletin all morning. Um, we'll, we'll do that, and uh, you know, we're going to make the best of it. And we're going to, next week for Father's Day, I invite you all, all you guys, I'm going to be wearing a Hawaiian shirt for Father's Day. You all can wear Hawaiian shirts. Whatever you need to do this summer, if you need to worship online because it's too warm, I understand it's okay. But we're going to do what we can. We're going to gather as we're able, and... Um, God's still going to meet us. Isn't that a beautiful thing? That no matter what else is going on around us, the circumstances we can't control, God calls us here to meet with us. And so that's what we're going to do all summer long. A couple other announcements. Uh, VBS is coming up, and Pat had some signs made up. If you want to stick one in your yard uh, to advertise for VBS, You can grab one of those on your way out of the sanctuary. Uh, And then we have two concert opportunities that are coming up. This afternoon, in all of its 90 degree glory, um, the Collingswood High School is partnering with Collingswood Sings and they will be doing a couple pieces of sacred music and performance here in the sanctuary. And so uh, I heard them on Friday night as I was coming through checking on them and they sound amazing. Amazing. One of the pieces they're doing is uh, Rudder's Gloria, and it just, it filled the sanctuary with such a beautiful sound. Um, If you're able to, I'd encourage you to come on out. And then on Saturday, the 24th at 7 p.m., Impact Singers, which is a ministry that Heather Adriano has been uh, leading here at first for the last couple months. Uh, They're going to be doing their performance up in the great room at 7 p.m. on June 24th. It'd be great to come out and encourage them and uh, the kids she's working with, kids from the community, kids from the church. Uh, It's a great opportunity to to have an impact on those kids' lives. That's all the announcements I'm going to give you. You can read your bulletin for the rest, check out Traces of Grace, Uh, for any more information you need, or always call and ask. You can always call, email, let us know what your questions are. I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to get started with our worship service this morning. God, we are grateful for who you are, for all that you're doing in our midst. We're grateful that uh, we can gather here today, and so come and bless us by your presence. Come and speak to our hearts and shape us in this time. We give you all the glory and all the praise because you alone are worthy. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. If it's too warm and you need to sit, it's okay. Do what, worship how you're comfortable today.
that this morning church amen amen you can be seated you can be seated our God is greater and if he's for us then who could ever be against us this time I'm going to invite our ushers to come forward they're going to uh, receive our morning gifts and offering the the things we've brought to give back to God as a part of our worship today and uh, if you filled out that connect card that's attached to your bulletin letting us know that you're here but also how we could be praying for you or if you have any questions or anything you can drop that right into the offering plate as well but I encourage you as you give this morning as an act of worship to give back to God uh, with a cheerful heart this morning. singing over me You have been so, so good to me Before I took a breath You breathed your life in me You have been so, so kind to me Oh God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. Oh, I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. I 
was your foe, steal your love far from me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, yeah. Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. Coming after me pray with me this morning. God, we are grateful for your overwhelming, never-stopping, reckless love. Love that you've poured out on us, that you've lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. You say that is what we are. You've reconciled us. You've adopted us into your very family. God, and we are so grateful. So grateful. God, as we gather here this morning, it could be easy to, to focus on the things that are outside of our control this morning. Things like air conditioners and high temperatures and denominational issues, things going on in our families, in the lives of our friends. We ask God that you would help us this morning to trust all of that back into your good hands. That you would help us not to be preoccupied or distracted by the things that are swirling around in our, our hearts and minds. 
God, we don't pretend that we can just leave them at the door, but we can choose to give them back to you. So would you help us to trust? Would you help us to continue to trust? Would you help us not to to place them there and then pull them back and place them there and pull them back, but to, to put them there, to leave them in your good hands and help us to do what you've called us to do, what you're asking each of us to do in the midst of those situations. Help us to be faithful, to continue to show that same kind of overwhelming, reckless love that you've shown to us. Help us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Help us to stand firm in that faith that's been handed down over years and years and centuries, millennia. At the faith that was once and for all entrusted to God's holy people. Would you help us to share that same good news with the world all around us? Help us to bear your very presence to those who need to see it most. God, we love you. We give you thanks and praise that you've brought us into your family. Help us to trust you, Father. We do trust you, but we want to trust you more. So would you give us faith? Would you give us your grace? As you've done so many times in the past. We love you and we thank you. We pray all this in your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you would like to stand and sing, we're going to sing Set a Fire. Now, this song is a little bit uh, repetitive if you um, want to kind of sing with us. We're going to be singing this or playing the same thing over and over again. So, for example, if I wanted to go, No place I would rather be no place I would rather be there's no place I would rather be than here in your love here in your love so if you want to sing that repeatedly that's fine whatever you want to do that'll set a fire down in your soul it'll all match with whatever we're doing so if you would like to stand and sing I would be very much accepted that I can't control I want more of you God I want more of you God place I would rather be there's no place I would rather be there's no place I would rather be than here in your love here in your love so set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain that I can't control I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more, I want more, I want more. That I can't contain, that I can't control. Cause I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love. There's no place I would rather be There's no place 
I would rather be There's no place I would rather be Than here in your love I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Cause I want more of you, God. I want more, 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 I want more of you. So hold me. Cause I want more of you, God I want more of you, God So set a fire down in my soul That I can't contain, that I can't control Cause I want more of you, God I want more of you, God Now, this one is going to be a little bit different not sure if you've heard this before, but I mean, we're all always waiting and, and um, just keeping God in our heart all the time. So I felt that this one would, would uh, actually go over pretty well for today. So it's a little bit different, but. is coming soon Call back the sinner Make up the saint And every nation Shout of your fame Jesus is coming soon Like a bride waiting for her groom We'll be a church Ready for you, every heart longing for our King. We sing, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. Even so come, Lord Jesus, come. There will be justice, all be anew. Your name forever, faithful and true. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church ready for you. Every heart longing for our King, we sing, even so. So come, Lord Jesus, come. So we wait, we wait for you. God, we wait, you're coming soon. So we wait, we wait.
Lord Jesus, come. And so come, Lord Jesus, come. Even so come, Lord Jesus, come. Even so come, Lord Jesus. You may be seated. seated. This morning I'll be reading our scripture from the book of Jude, verses 1 through 4. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and a brother of James, to those who have been called who are loved by God the Father and kept by Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt I had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to the saints. For certain men whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are godless men who change the grace of our God into a license for immortality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. All right, at this time, if there are kids who want to head to Children's Church, you're invited to do that. But, kids, know that you're coming back in a little later in the service. You can still go with Miss Hannah, but uh, we'll be calling the kids back in a little later in the service when we get to celebrate confirmation and baptism and the receiving of new members. So we want them to be able to be a part of that here this morning. All right. And while we're talking about that, after the service, there's going to be a a light reception in the great room. We're going to give you a chance to greet uh, the new members, the confirmation kids today. So I encourage you, if you've you've got a few minutes to pop in and, and say hi and That would be great. Get to know some of the the new members this morning. Have you ever felt like you were a younger sibling being overshadowed by an older sibling? Anybody? Any any middle children out there? (laughs) Uh, It's not just middle children, I guess. But uh, anyway, for those of you who don't know, I'm the second child out of four. I've got an older sister, then it's me. I've got a younger brother and our baby sister. And for much of my adolescence, I remember being known as Kelly Rambo's little brother. So much so that when she decided, probably around eighth or ninth grade, that she felt that God was calling her to be a missionary, it was the first profession off my list. I was not going to be a missionary. And then when I went into high school, in those four years that I spent in, you know, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, she spent at Asbury College. And so, Asbury College, not on the list for me. Good little brother, you know. Um, but apparently, God has quite the sense of humor Because if you know our story at all, you know that I did go to Asbury College and I did serve as a missionary in Uganda. So all that to say, especially you young people, careful what you say never to when it comes to God. Anyway, I say all that today because we are beginning a new sermon series this morning in which we'll be looking at the book of Jude. This series developed out of a study that I did with the Tuesday morning Bible study back in the fall, and uh, this is only a three-week sermon series, but I took six weeks in the fall to go through all this with the the Bible study group, so uh, you're welcome. Only three weeks this this time in Jude. but this, this study that I did in the fall in this sermon series was, was influenced and inspired by a study I participated in uh, with a, a professor named Dr. Andy Miller. And uh, so if you hear anything good, it probably came from him. And if there's anything in it you don't like, that's, that's probably my stuff. Anyway, we're looking at the letter of Jude 
who just so happened to be a younger brother who could have easily felt overshadowed by his brothers. You see, the author of the letter of Jude, and Jude, by the way, is just a kind of a shortened version of the name Judah, kind of like you know, we've got a son named Timothy, but we call him Tim. So Judah, Jude, came into Greek as Judas. Any, any guesses as to why Jude might not have been wanting to be called Judas in the early church? You, you guys get the point. You get the point. Anyway, back to Jude's brothers. Jude could have easily felt overshadowed by his older brother, James. James was one of the, the three big leaders in the early church in Jerusalem. Jude, uh, James, Peter, John, they were kind of the leaders there of the church in Jerusalem. Um, but being the brother of James, that wasn't the James who was brothers with John. That was James who was the brother of Jesus. And so that means Jude was also the brother of of Jesus. I see a great deal of humility in the fact that as Jude starts this letter off, he could have said, this letter is from Jude, the brother of Jesus Christ. Right? Like, that's got some weight to it. But instead, Jude's content to be known as a servant of Jesus and the brother of James. Sometimes we can't help getting that, that, that name drop in there. Um, but Jude, the servant of Jesus, the brother of James, I don't see this as a small thing, right? All through the Gospels, we read stories about times where there is tension between Jesus and his brothers, they wanted him to go down to Jerusalem. He said, it's not my time to go down to Jerusalem. They, they want him to stop doing ministry and come home. And he said, this is what I've been called to do. They didn't understand who he was. <coughs> Excuse me. They didn't understand who Jesus was or what he was called to do. And so they tried to stop him. But all of that changed at the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. So much so that in Acts chapter 1, verse 14, we read that when, when the, uh, the apostles were gathered in that upper room in Jerusalem, waiting for the Holy Spirit who came upon them on the day of Pentecost, who was there with them? Jesus' mother and his brothers. There was a transformation that took place, and it says something to me. That Jude could go from unbelieving brother, not just to believer, but to author of Scripture. Any of you who have siblings or who have had kids and there's been some sibling rivalry, you can imagine the transformation that was necessary to have taken place for that to become possible. For Jude to be, go from unbeliever author of scripture but that's what happened when he saw jesus crucified and resurrected he saw the power of god and he go he went on to become one of the leaders in the church so i started to think well, why did why did jude write this letter why did he feel the need to write to the church at this time well Luckily, luckily, this is one of the few New Testament letters that tells us exactly what the author was thinking, why he wrote the letter to the church. Jude himself tells us that he was preparing to write something else, something about our shared salvation. I imagine a nice, encouraging, theological article that would have really encouraged the church and helped them as they continued to think about the implications of, of this God who became man, who died in our place so that we could be reconciled and redeemed. But Jude felt he couldn't write that letter. He couldn't write about what he wanted to write about because he had to write about 
what he had to write about. He felt such a compulsion to address the situation that he saw happening in the church that he couldn't be content to write what he wanted to write. Instead, Jude 3 tells us he felt compelled to write to them, to urge them, to contend for the faith once and for all delivered to God's holy people. There's some pretty strong words used just in that one little phrase. He felt compelled. He wanted to urge them so that they could contend for the faith, which means that this faith must be pretty important, right? It must matter enough that Jude feels that strongly about it. So what is this faith? This faith that was once and for all delivered to the saints. Well, it's what theologians call the charismatic core. Okay, you can remember that for the test later. The charismatic core. That just means it's the teaching core. What what the teaching of the apostles that had been passed down in the tradition of the church. You see, Jude is only writing some 30 to 50 years after the resurrection of Jesus, but already that apostolic tradition, remember in Acts 2, 42, it tells us that the, uh, the early church devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the breaking of bread, to fellowship, to prayer, to being together. That apostolic teaching became the core of what was believed, and it was being developed and passed down, even just a couple decades later. As Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, as he's teaching about worship and and communion, he said, for I receive from the Lord what I also pass down to you. And sometimes, And when we're celebrating communion, we still read those same words from 1 Corinthians 11. Or in 2 Timothy 2, 2, Paul's writing to this younger pastor who's a spiritual son to him, and he tells him, the things you've heard from me, you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, pass it on and trust it to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others, right? This is how the the faith has been passed on. Jude's saying that the faith that was delivered once and for all to God's holy people, it's that unchanging gospel, unchanging good news of Jesus, which is then translated, right, into each culture and each generation of the church. This is the same good news that our confirmation kids are going to confess Later in the service, as they join the church, become members of the church, they stand in an unbroken line that stretches all the way back to the apostles who passed it on to others, who passed it on to others, who passed it on to others, who passed it on to us, who are now passing it on to them. And they're going to pass it on to generations that follow them. It's the message that, God, that by God's grace, we can be forgiven and transformed, that we can be reconciled to God and bear his spirit, bear his presence in the world. And when it comes to that faith, we're called to contend for the faith, not to become content sitting back and watching resting on the knowledge we've accumulated or or what's been accomplished in the past. I don't know if any of you have ever been kayaking. Anybody ever paddle a kayak? Okay, a few of you. How about a canoe? It's a little similar. All right. I love to kayak, and during the, the pandemic, when we couldn't do anything with other people, we found some used kayaks, and we'd go out a couple times, and and I remember one time, my brother-in-law Josh and I took a couple of kayaks out, not on some little lake near Mullica Hill where we lived, but out from Summers Point, you know, into the marshes and all that back there. And we were having a good time paddling through the marsh grass, and they've got all those little channels you can go through. And um, 
The thing about kayaking, though, is that even in the calmest of waters, if you're paddling, you go in the direction you're paddling, right? But as soon as you stop paddling, you start to slow down. You begin to drift. You end up where maybe you weren't intending to go. Anyway, we were paddling along in the relatively calm waters of the marshes, and we went around to Ben, and it became very clear to us that we were no longer in the marshes. We were out on the bay, and there was wind, and there were waves, and we had to paddle hard. We had to contend to keep going in the direction we wanted to go. If we stopped paddling, if we stopped contending, we were going to end up somewhere we didn't want to go. At best, with our nose in the marsh grass. At worst, we were going to be in the bay instead of in the kayaks. But the same is true of our faith right? We're either moving forward with Jesus, growing in our faith, becoming more like him, contending for the faith, or we get content. We stop paddling. Our growth slows down. We stop cooperating with the grace of God working in our lives, and we begin to drift. We end up somewhere we don't want to go. Or worse, we capsize, right? Paul talked about making a shipwreck of our faith. And and a kayak's not quite a ship, but you get the idea. You get the idea. This is what Jude saw going on in the church of his time. False teachers had slipped into the church. So notice, as we enter into this series, that Jude is calling us to contend for the cha- for the ch- for the mm. Jude is calling us to contend for the faith not by contending against the world but contending for the faith even within the church so these false teachers that have slipped in they were doing two things one they were using the grace of god that grace that is able to forgive every sin. And they were saying that if God is going to forgive us, if God loves us, then it's okay to continue in sin because God is just going to forgive us anyway. It's kind of like what Paul was saying at the end of Romans chapter 5 as he transitions into Romans chapter 6. He said, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more. That sounds good, right? Who doesn't want grace to increase? But he continues, what then shall we say? Shall we go on sinning? Shall we continue to sin so that grace may increase? May it never be. Some translations say, by no means. See, these false teachers that had slipped in to the early church of Jude's day, They were offering what Dietrich Bonhoeffer called cheap grace. Cheap grace. Grace that doesn't take seriously the price that Jesus paid to redeem us and reconcile us. Cheap grace that says it doesn't matter what you continue to do because God will just keep loving and forgiving you. And in a sense, that's true. But as Paul tells us, we can't continue in that kind of a mindset. The second thing that these false teachers do is that by their actions, they were denying Jesus Christ as their sovereign and Lord. You see, they were putting themselves in the very position of God to judge for themselves what was good and what was not. It's the same lie that the enemy has been telling us since the serpent in the garden, right? You can be like God. You can determine what's right and wrong. You can know what is good and what's evil. As we know from Adam and Eve, that didn't turn out so well. It's a denial 
of Jesus Christ, right? Who is not only the Savior who forgives us, and he will forgive us time and time again as we repent, but it's also, Jesus is also the Lord to whom we owe every allegiance. So we're going to talk about these false teachers more next week, but I would have to imagine that I'm not alone this morning in thinking that so far Jude's letter seems pretty familiar. So the question for us, church, is this. Are we going to be content in our faith, or are we going to contend for the faith? Being content in our faith looks like being quiet, Being passive when we see bad theology, bad teaching creeping into the church. Being content looks like focusing inward on ourselves, on our wants and our needs. Being content looks like trying to build a neat and tidy faith where there are no loose ends, there are no questions, there's nothing we're still wrestling with. Being content looks like drawing lines based on those who are in and those who are out or oversimplifying issues so that things look like they're either black or they're white, but there is no middle ground. But contending for the faith, contending for the faith looks like being vocal and active in our defense of the historic and orthodox theology that's been passed down to us. Contending for the faith looks like focusing outward on those that we are sent to reach. Contending looks like accepting those times where faith feels messy because we're holding in tension multiple things that are true and we're trying to see how we can hold on to all of them at the same time. Contending for the faith looks like looking for ways to cross those lines in the sand to those who are on the outside that God wants to bring in. Contending for the faith looks like understanding that while there is absolute truth, right? We believe that God is true. The application of that truth when it comes to real people in real relationships can sometimes exist in the gray. To sum it all up, I think that what Jesus is calling us to today is faithful engagement within the church and with the world. And that's going to look different in each of those contexts. Jude is calling us to contend for the faith within the church, standing firm on that faith that was once and for all delivered to God's holy people. But I think Jude would also call us to faithfully engage with the world by embodying the true grace of the gospel that invites all to be reconciled to God by grace through faith, which leads to repentance. So church, let's not settle for being a congregation that's content. Let us contend for the faith that was once and for all delivered to God's holy people. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you're not sure what that faith is, we're going to recite the Apostles' Creed the faith that was handed down to us. So I want to invite you to stand. We're going to uh, recite the Apostles' Creed together to remind ourselves, to remind one another of this faith that's been passed down to us. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Because we're not quite done yet. We're not quite done yet. At this time, we're going to move into our, our time of baptism and confirmation and receiving new members as we celebrate what God has done and is doing in the life of our church. Brothers and sisters, the church is of God, and it will be pre- preserved to the end of time for the conduct of worship and the due administration of God's word and sacraments, the maintenance of Christian fellowship and discipline, the edification of believers, and the conversion of the world. All of every age and station stand in need of the means of grace, which it alone, which the church alone supplies. This time I'm going to invite Sam Schock to come forward. Sam is coming. He's grown up here in the church, but he's never been baptized. And he said, Pastor Scott, I want to come and join the church. And I said, well, we can do that. But first, we're going to baptize you. So Sam wanted to say a few words before his baptism. So. Check. There we go. Hi. So, my name is Sam, for those of you who don't know me. But, uh, as I look amongst you all, I see a lot of familiar faces that I've grown up with. And you've all seen me grow up, for the most part, in this church. My parents coming here before I was even born. And so, I grew up, and after asking God to be in my heart seven times, (laughs) and not really getting it, At the age of 14, on a summer mission trip with Sean, I had a conversation with him, and that's when I actually began to get it. And so, after that, I went through high school, and even began to go out to college, and didn't really get what it meant to live Christian. And God really showed me what it meant. He I was stuck in my ways with becoming an engineering student. He said, go to business. He gave me a fire for the faith through my Bible minor. And he put me under the instruction of so many good mentors who showed me values of what it meant to have integrity in the faith and what it meant to live Christian, not just in my own home and in my own life, but showing that to other people. And coming back, I'm glad that I got to get back into the church a little bit. And eventually the conversation came up about becoming a member. And I realized I'd never been baptized. So eventually it was both God and the church that said, hey, let's make it official. And we're grateful. We're grateful that. So Sam, before you are baptized, I have a couple questions for you. Sam, do you truly and earnestly repent of your sins? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? And in his son, Jesus Christ, our only, his only son and our Lord? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament? And do you promise, according to the grace that God gives you, to keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in the same all the days of your life as a faithful member of Christ's holy church? I invite you to kneel. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we call upon you for Sam, your servant that he, in coming to holy baptism, 
may see remission of his sins, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Receive him, O Lord, as you have promised by your well-beloved Son, and grant that he may be faithful to thee all the days of his life, and may finally come to the eternal kingdom which you have promised, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sam, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And as we continue, I'd like to invite our confirmation students who we've been working with over the last few months to come forward. And they're going to remember to line up by alphabetical order, just like we practiced last week. Walker, you're down here. He missed, he missed, so that's okay, that's all right. It's all right. All right, confirmands. We've got those same questions to ask of you. Do you, in the presence of God in this congregation, renew the solemn vow and promise that was made at your baptism? Do you truly and earnestly repent of your sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, who descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Do you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? And do you promise, according to the grace given to you, to keep God's holy will and commandments, to walk in the same all the days of your life as faithful members of Christ's holy church? I'm going to invite you now to, to turn and kneel. Bethany, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Joanna, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Elizabeth, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Emma, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Chloe, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace. By his spirit, confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Lillian, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace. By his spirit, confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Nathan, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Allison, the Lord defend you with his heavenly grace and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. 
Asher. The Lord defend you with his heavenly grace and by his spirit confirm you in the faith and fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll invite you to stand. And, and there are some new members who have desired to become a part of the congregation here at FUMC as well. So I'll invite you now to come and join us here at the front. Do you, in the presence of God in this congregation, renew the solemn vow and promise that was made at your baptism? Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to keep God's holy will and commandments and walk in the same all the days of your life as faithful members of Christ's holy church? Will you be faithful to Christ? This is for all of you, all right, who are becoming members this morning. Will you be faithful to Christ through this congregation and uphold it by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Brothers and sisters, I commend to your love and care these persons whom we, the, whom we this day receive into the membership of this congregation. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. If you will stand with these brothers and sisters in faith, will you stand? That's great, yeah. <laughs> Literally stand with them. I love it. And, and we're going to recite the vow that's made, that's on the screen together. We rejoice to recognize you as members of Christ's holy church and bid you welcome to this congregation of the United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our covenant to uphold it by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ, that surrounded by steadfast love, you may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Amen. And may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you now and evermore. Amen. Amen. All right. The new members are going to just sit here or come here to the front pew. We're going to sing a song to close our service of worship. And then they're going to slip out and uh, stand in the lobby on the way to the great room. And I encourage each of you, rather than just slipping out, uh, through the narthex. Take time to go and greet them. Tell them your name. Ask them their name and uh, get to know them a little bit this morning as new members in our congregation. Let's continue to stand and we're going to sing. Yes, I will.
will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out is working all things out oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will bless your name When my heart is heavy for all my days Oh yes I will for all my days Oh yes I will And I choose to praise To glorify, to glorify the name of all names Nothing can stand against And I choose to praise Information kids, new members, head on out so people can come and greet you. Go in grace and go in peace this week.